Local groups have three main purposes, organizing the model tree, performing collective operations, and patterning multiple features. You can create local groups either in parts and assemblies. And right now I have an assembly open, and if I take a look at the model tree, I can see that there are a lot of different components in here and might take me a while to understand the design intent, but by creating some local groups, I can easily organize it. And I'm selecting a bunch of inclusive features using the shift key. And then from the mini toolbar, this icon allows you to create a group and it gives it the name local group. I highly recommend that you rename it. So for example, these are the, oops, bridges. And then next in the model tree, we have a bunch of datums for the wheels. So again, I can select them and then choose group and rename. And these will be my wheel datums. And then we have our wheels. And already you can see that my model tree is getting easier to understand. And I see in here, oh, we have a whole bunch of different fasteners. Again, select them, group, and I'm going to call this fasteners, and so on and so forth. And I would go through that, doing that with all these different groups. And for the sake of speed for these last few, I am not going to rename them, but you definitely should. And you can see that as I'm putting the different groups in here, it gets easier to understand the design intent that went into this assembly. So I can look through here and say, okay, here's the frame weld, bridges, wheel datums, sprockets, some other components, fasteners, so forth and so on. Now let's take a look at using local groups in a part model. And here we'll use it for performing collective operations and for patterning. And so I've got a bunch of features. So there is an extrude here, and then there's a hole that goes through here as well. And we have some different patterns. Actually, I grabbed the pattern of the drafts, but there is a pattern of other extrudes in here as well. And so I want to create multiple instances of all these different features. And what you'll find is that you can do reference patterns, but sometimes certain features don't reference pattern, like rounds and drafts sometimes have some issues. And so to create the group, you'll select one feature. Again, you can start either the top feature or the bottom feature. And I'm going to select down to the draft feature. I'm going to deliberately not include one of the different features that I actually want in here. You select them, and then again from the mini toolbar, you can choose the group command. And I'm going to call this a boss. And if I expand it, you can see all the different features that are located in here. And I realize, oh wait, here's this hole. This hole really should be a member of the group as well. You can drag and drop features in and out of the group. So I drag it up and there's the hole now in the group. And again, if you wanted to drag a feature out of the group, you could grab it and drag it to another location. You want it in the group, hey, just go and drag it down in there. All right, so now I have, oh, I actually don't want this datum in there. So there I have the group of features that I want to perform collective operations. And you can see that I can hide by the group. In this case here, it's solid geometry, so it wouldn't have an effect. But some of the more important ones that you typically do with groups is that you can delete a group of features, and also you could suppress a group of features. And I will click OK, and there they are suppressed. And hey, let's go ahead and resume that group of features. There we go. All right. And besides the collective operations, one of the biggest ones that people want to do typically is to pattern a group of features. And so I will select the boss and then click the pattern command. And by default, it goes to a dimension pattern. Let's change this to a point pattern. And I'm going to select as my sketch that I am going to use. Let us use, I think it's, this is the sketch that I want. Yep. And there we see the preview of the different instances. Hit the check mark. And that way I have a pattern of groups in here. 
These are called local groups in contrast to user-defined features, which really are external groups. Now I'm going to place a couple of user-defined features in this assembly. Let me go to my working directory and I have a UDF for some fasteners. And I'm just going to place two instances in here. Let me select the necessary references and hit the check mark. And let's do it one more time. And what you see is that when you place a user-defined feature, in essence, it does become a local group in the model. So again, let's select our necessary references in order to place it. And I've got those two different groups here and you can group groups. So I can select these and then choose the group command. And that way if I expand it, you can see that we have groups and you can create groups within groups, so forth and so on. And another thing to note is that you can actually enter insert mode in the middle of a group to add more components or features depending on which kind of model that you have open. Be aware that this was not possible a few versions ago in uh, Creo Parametric. You could not do insert mode. Also another thing to note about these groups, let me, I'm oh, trying to exit insert mode, there we go, uh, is that also in earlier versions there are situations in which you could not suppress individual members of a group. If you try to suppress an individual component in a group, uh, sometimes it would have you suppress the entire group. But now you can suppress and delete individual members of the group without having to ungroup. And if you wanted to ungroup a bunch of components in a group, just select the group. And here is the ungroup command. And now we're back to these two individual groups. And again, I can repeat that if I just want to essentially expand those groups in the model tree. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.